Ooh, it is like minus, well, it's minus 41 degrees Celsius right now outside where I live, minus 41. Why do we live here? Ooh, it's cold. Hey everyone, Mitch here with Fit for Moto. Thanks for checking out another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you which helmet I picked up. Now you're probably asking yourself, why should you give a crap which helmet I got? There's a lot of personal things. There's the way they look, you think they look cool, they don't look cool, they look dumb, they don't look dumb. How do they fit? Is it comfortable? Lots of flashy colorways and stuff like that. But there is a reason on why you should give a crap which helmet I got. And it's not because I know everything, but for the people that do know me, it's because like anything, I wanna see the data, I wanna see the science behind why I'm getting what I'm getting, what it's gonna do when I need it to do it. I don't just randomly pick things based on color or anything like that. So with that in mind, let's dig right into it. Today, I'm gonna to show you which helmet I got, which is the new 6D ATR2 helmet. Now, oh, I can feel it, I can feel it. There are definitely going to be some of you that are like, dude, you got the 6D helmet? That's probably the last one I would get. They're overpriced, they're bigger than most helmets. Yes, but like I mentioned, there is some science behind why I got that helmet. So uh, roll the intro and let's dig into it. All right, so as you're probably familiar with any type of helmet, there are different safety ratings. And now you probably know of the DOT and the Snell safety rating. Yes, helmets have to have that, but I don't just accept that, okay, they have the Snell and the DOT safety rating. Well, what is it? Why do they have to have that? And is there a better rating available? What helmets are gonna be the safest ones? Because let's face it, when you're talking about a helmet of any kind, its primary job is saving your noodle. And to me, that's worth all the money in the world. I'm not gonna pick up a cheap helmet thinking that it's gonna save my head during some of those bigger impacts. And I would suggest that you should spend the money on a better quality helmet. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the certifications. Like I mentioned, I'm a bit of a nerd. So we are busting out the whiteboard and that's when you know things are getting serious. Now, for the time being, pay no attention to this bottom part. Just pay attention to the top number. Now, in 1972, the Hick equation was developed and that is for uh, the dot and the Snell certification. So if you see a dot in the Snell certification, like is on this MSR helmet on the back here, it says dot, it has gone through this Hick equation. Now you don't need to know what all these numbers and all this massive mumble jumble here are. What you do need to understand is the strength of the impact and the time involved in that impact is going to give you a higher number. The higher the number, the more likely you are to get a fractured skull. And that's really what the Hick number deals with is fractured skulls because they use a bunch of cadavers and they just smash the crap out of their heads to figure out what kind of um, velocity and stuff like that is going to cause some kind of fractured skull, you know, by car manufacturers and things like that. This, this equation is from 1972 and that is what the DOT and the Snell certifications are based off of. It's ancient. Well, what it doesn't take into account either are things like concussions. When your brain is sloshing around inside your head, this Hick number, it doesn't account for that. Well, times have changed, which is why they've come up with the, oh, my B kind of got messed up here. They come up with something called the brick number. Now with the brick number, it does take into account the brain sloshing around inside the, around inside the head. And the way that that number was developed was through Scientists, unfortunately, doing a bunch of testing on animals, which I'm not okay with. However, did a bunch of testing on animals and they got some average velocity numbers for the amount of angular velocity of the brain inside the skull. They give them some of these numbers. Again, you don't need to know the whole story behind these equations. What you do need to know is that the brick number that was developed in 2013 is completely different than the Hick number, which just deals with fractured skulls. The brick number takes into account concussions. Now here is the important part. When you're talking Dot and Snell, they just want the Hick number. This new brick number from 2013 doesn't matter to them. However, the FIM and the ECE, they need both. They're gonna combine both the Hick number and the brick number to give you a better safety rating on that helmet. So they're gonna look at the numbers and the data that they pull from these equations during all these different tests that they run with the helmet and they're gonna build it to specifications that make it much safer for people using that helmet. Now, we've got that figured out. So there is the science behind it. Okay, well, 
Like I said, some helmets only have the dot and other helmets do have a higher level of safety rating. So if you see there's an ECE number on here, odds are it's been used in this rating. Now, full disclosure, you will see like on the 6D, there's an ECE of 2205. I believe it's the 2206 that are definitively using both numbers. However, most helmet manufacturers that have the 22.05 uh, today are using both those equations. However, you'll know they have it when it's 22.06. They're just not out quite yet, I don't think. I haven't seen one anyway. So we've got the science behind why we're picking the safety rating that we're picking. We're not going with this super old equation anymore. We're also going with something that was done in 2013, the brick equation, which involves concussions and not just fractured skull. Because as riders, we're not necessarily looking at fractured skulls, right? Like I get it from a car accident, hitting something at 100 kilometers per hour or something like that. But a lot of times for riders, we get concussions. And another reason that I went with the 6D helmet is because of the technology inside the 6D helmet. Now, generally with a lot of helmets, you've probably heard of MIPS before, which MIPS is essentially just a liner that sits inside the helmet and allows a certain amount of slip. So when you bang your head side to side, front to back, whatever, you're gonna allow a certain amount of slip inside that. So the sleeve is gonna move a little bit. That's essentially, that's what MIPS is inside a helmet. The cheaper helmets, they don't have MIPS. They just have a couple different foam liners that when you impact them, the foam will give a little bit, taking some of that impact, trying to save your head from getting fractured. The problem is, is that it's not dealing with a lot of the energy forces involved. So when you hit the ground, okay, you know, your, your brain will, uh, or sorry, your, your liner will shift a little bit inside of that, uh, inside of that liner with the MIPS. But what I really like about the 6D helmet is it has a bunch of these little shocks for lack of a better term. And on those shocks, you think of it like little suspensions and in there, the shell and the liner can uh, move, or, or sorry, the, the liner can move within the shell a little bit on these little suspension things. And that's one of the, uh, the technologies that only 6D has. Liat has something similar. I think they're called turbines or something like that. Same type of idea, albeit a little bit different, where the liner where your head sits in, it has a little more freedom to move around inside there. So as you're jostling your head around during an accident, the liner and those little suspensions are going to take a little bit more of those trajectories, those angular velocities and things like that. 6D has that. Uh, some of the cheaper helmets do not have that. The, the helmet that I was wearing when I had my bad crash last year was the uh, Fox V3 helmet. As you can see, it's a little banged up. Uh, it had the fluid inside technology, these little fluid pods that sit all over and they're supposed to mimic your brain fluid. Uh, it does have the ECE 2205 rating on it. Um, I did like this, however, you know, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I don't test helmets for a living, but I do feel like with the new HIC and brick equations coming into play, not just the HIC, uh, and given the technology that the 6D helmet does have inside of it, I just feel like this is, for me, this is the safest option. Yes, it's expensive. This helmet, uh, Canadian, is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 bucks. I know, cringeworthy, it's a lot of money. But I do feel like it's worth the money when it comes to saving your brain. I like the technology in these things. I like the safety rating that they have. That's why I went with the 6D helmet. There you go. So if you're looking at getting a new helmet, keep some of this stuff in mind. Don't cheap out, don't go with a cheap helmet. The safety rating is not there. It is not worth it. Look for a safety rating that is going to involve both of these equations, the Hick and the Brick equations. Keep your head a little safer. See you in the next video.